Hello, and welcome to Hawk Math. Today we're going to be solving this integral, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the nth power of x dx, where specifically in this case n is an even integer. Now, this, the way we're going to solve this is we're going to be deriving something called a power reduction formula for cosine, and we're going to do this by integrating by parts. The way we do this is we first rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the n minus 1 power of x times cosine of x dx. Okay, now we're going to do integration by parts. We are going to integrate uh, integrate cosine x and differentiate cosine uh, to the power n minus 1 of x. So, um, let me write that down. Cosine n minus 1 of x and cosine of x. If you integrate cosine of x, you get sine of x. Sorry, I wrote the n twice. And then if you differentiate cosine of x, you get n minus 1 times cosine to the n minus 2 power x, and then chain rule says we multiply by negative sine of x. So, okay, now we can rewrite this integral as sine of x times that, so sine of x times cosine of power n minus 1 of x, evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, minus the integral of those multiplied. But if you notice that negative will cancel out, so we can just write plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi, of this times that, which will give us the sines will give us a sine squared. So we have cosine to n minus 2 power of x times sine squared of x dx. Okay, now how can we simplify this? Well, let's look at this first term. We notice that it doesn't actually matter what power of n is up in this exponent, because no matter what, the sine of 2 pi and the sine of 0 will give you a 0 for both the terms. So no matter what, this will just go to 0. So we can ignore that. Now, for this part, the sine squared doesn't really help us, but if we write this in terms of cosine, we'll see a nice formula. So we see that this is equal to the integral of from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the power n minus 2 of x times 1 minus cosine squared of x dx. And now rewriting this by distributing. Oh, sorry, I forgot all the way back up here this n minus 1 is a coefficient, so let me add that in. Okay, so now we can distribute this to both terms. So the integral from 0 to 2 pi of n minus 1 times cosine to the power n minus 2 of x dx. And now we have this minus the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Remember that n minus 1 gets distributed. Times the cosine to the power n minus 2 times the cosine squared will combine into just cosine to the nth power. And we're left with that. Now, if we notice, what did we originally start with? We originally started with this, integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the power of x dx. And we notice over here, this is the same integrand, other than the constant which can be drawn to the outside. So we can rewrite this whole expression as, let's call this integral i. So we have i equals the integral from 0 to 2 pi of n minus 1 times cosine to the, to the power n minus 2 of x dx minus n minus 1 times i. So we can now add this to both sides. So if I'm going to get rid of that and say uh, n minus 1 times i plus i, and that will just give us n times i. So we have n times i equals the integral from 0 to 2 pi of n minus 1 times cosine to the power n minus 2 of x dx. Now, again, we want to solve for i, so we can divide both sides by n. So we get that i is equal to, I'm going to bring this constant to the outside, n minus 1 over n times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the power n minus 2 of x dx. Now look at that. We see that this nicely reduced from here to here. So the, the power on n went down by 2. So let's see if we can now evaluate this in a more general form, because if we notice, this will keep telescoping. We could also write i as using the same exact formula again, going down by n minus 2, we have i times, sorry, equals n minus 1 over n. And now if we were to keep doing this and going down more, we would have times n minus 3 over n minus 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi 
of cosine to the power n minus 4 of x dx just by going down by another 2 again. And so as you can see, this pattern, this telescoping pattern, will keep going all the way. So if we keep going all the way, we can write this as i equals n minus 1 times n minus 3 times n minus 5 dot 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 all the way down until, remember, we said n was initially even. So this will end at 1. And then on the denominator, we have n times n minus 2 times n minus 4 dot dot dot, and we will end at 2 because n was initially even. And then we have all of that times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the 0th power of x. But anything to the 0th power is just 1, so that just becomes the integral of 1 dx. Now, we can rewrite this as i equals, I'm going to use the double factorial notation, so n minus 1 double factorial over n double factorial, and then this just becomes 2 pi. Now, we could stop here. This is a very neat form to show what this integral is equal to for even values of n, but we can actually keep going and simplify this even more. The way we do this is we can rewrite a few things using some key facts. The first fact is that since n, it, n is odd, n minus 1 double factorial is equal to n factorial over n double factorial. And if you look at y, all of these terms will just cancel out with the n factorial, leaving us with just the n minus 1 double factorial. So we can replace this into here. And now the second fact, fact that we need to use is that n double factorial, when n is even, which we initially assumed, is that this is equal to n over 2 factorial times 2 to the power n over 2. Now, if you think about y, imagine distributing one of those 2s to every single term in this n. Then it will end up giving you this n double factorial. If you want to write it out for an example, you can. So we can now add in those into, substitute those formulas into here. So we get i is equal to 2 pi times n minus 1 double factorial. We previously decided it was n factorial over n double factorial. But let me have another, another n double factorial. So we can write this as n double factorial square. And now this is equal to, by plugging in this formula over here, 2 pi times n factorial over n over 2 factorial times 2 to the power n over 2. And now we have to square that part. Okay, now the squared actually cancels out and gives us some nice numbers. So this is equal to 2 pi times n factorial over, when we square this, we get n over 2 factorial, and we square that, and then this 2 will cancel out with that, just giving us a 2 to the n. Okay, now we're almost done. I'm going to make this 2 to the n, bring it to the outside. So we have a pi over 2 to the n minus 1, because that 2 cancels out here. And on the inside, what do we have? We have n factorial over n over 2 factorial squared. So we can rewrite this as n factorial over n over 2 factorial, n minus n over 2 factorial. And what do we notice about this? Well, this is precisely equal to n choose n over 2. So we're going to choose this combination. So we can write this as pi over 2 to the n minus 1 times n combination n over 2. And so this is the final formula. So this integral we start with up here is equal to both this formula right here and this. So rewriting this as a neat and final, final notation, I'm going to say that this is equal to n choose n over 2 times pi times 2 to the, I'm going to rewrite this 2 in the top. So we have negative n plus 1 or 1 minus n. So we have 2 to the 1 minus n power. So there we go. That is our final answer. Um, if we wanted to look at specific values, such for example, if we wanted to look at, what, okay, if the n was 100, then our answer would be 100, choose 50, times pi, times 2 to the power, negative 99. And that's all it would be. So using this formula, we can very easily calculate the interval from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of the power. We could also, if we wanted to use different bounds by, with this stuff up here, we could choose other bounds and evaluate those directly. But this is just an interesting result. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more.